We have presented our report and recommendations to MPs and the public. You would have received a copy. I want to thank many members of Parliament who have spoken out in support of the committee's recommendations. If adopted by the government, how will the recommendations strengthen national service? Well, pre-enlistees can look forward to shorter waiting times before enlistment. The committee has set a limit of six months that the SCF should impose on itself for 90% of pre-enlistees to start NS within four months of finishing their post-secondary education. It's double the current 45%. In other words, under the current system, 45% of pre-enlistees are called up after they finish their post-secondary, secondary education, whether it's ITE, poly, or A-levels or overseas. Committee says double this to 90%. Call people up to 90%. 90% to be called up within four months and set the absolute cap at six months. Reduce the waiting time. The SAF has studied this recommendation. It's a, as I said, it's one with a huge administrative impact because we are dealing with about 20,000 NS men every year. The SAF, the SPF, and the SCDF have studied this recommendation carefully. And if accepted by government, this will be implemented as early as the middle of next year. The usual June and September intakes will be brought forward to May and August, respectively, which are mainly polytechnic graduates. And listing them earlier will mean that they will get into the workforce faster because they were completed earlier. It also means that polytechnic students enlisted previously in September and bound for local universities in August will not need to be disrupted because previously it was two years and they had to be disrupted before they finish it. Because if we bring it earlier, they will now be able to complete their NS before they go to universities. ITE students will also benefit from a shorter waiting time. Similarly, A-level graduates will be enlisted a month earlier starting December next year. I say this very quickly, but I will tell you that my SAF commanders are sweating over this because they are juggling it. Each batch is about five, six, seven thousand, and they're wondering, how do we do this? But they've studied it. They're confident that they can do it. We give them the full support. If government accepts it, we see some changes. We will have a regular, a larger regular instructor corps to train and lead our full-time national servicemen. This will strengthen the transmission of values and the effectiveness of our NS training. We will still require full-time national servicemen to be trainers, but those who are trainers will have the benefit of learning and working alongside experienced regulars amongst them. Because this core of regular trainers, this will be their core expertise. They will train batch after batch, learn from it. We have recommended 1,001 more for SAF, 230 for the home team. And we expect that more regular trainers and the use of technology and naval instruction will translate to better and faster learning and shorter training periods eventually. At the same time, more NSFs can become commanders. An increase in the proportion of officers and specialists from 30% to 40%. Because our third generation SAF, our SPF, our SCDF, more nimble and requires its subunits and commanders to act accordingly. We're using more technology. We are asking commanders and units to respond quicker. Such appointments will be based on qualifications and merit. For the first time, we will ask NSF's full-time national servicemen to indicate their preferred vocations. Where would you like to go? This is another headache that my SAF commanders are grappling with, similarly SPF and SCDF. Because any time you give choice to everyone, not all will get their first and second choice. That's what happens for our schools. But should we say no choice? We decide. The committee deliberated this, says even though some not all will get their first or second choice. This shouldn't deter us because giving choice will better match aptitudes, vocation, 
and allow people who want to contribute in areas that they think they have strengthened to do so. We will also accredit skills under the Workforce Skills Qualifications Framework that national servicemen pick up in areas such as leadership and technical and specialist vocations so that after NS, if they pick up skills within NS and they are WSQ certified, it will enhance their employability after NS. This is particularly so for IT poly graduates. MINDEF will also work with MOE, our tertiary institutions and economic agencies to facilitate a smoother and shorter transition to work and studies after the national service.